Welcome, everybody, to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, it's a very special place we're going to be fly fishing. We're here at Willow Creek in Wyoming. We're going to be fly fishing for brown trout on the small creek. This is real exciting fishing. The, the fish are in the size from 8 inches right up to 18 inches. Rich Swanson, who's from New York, is here at the ranch with me. We're going to be doing a little bit of technique. It will talk about some of the patterns we're using, such as the Madame X and the tarantula to catch these big brown trout on small flies. It's going to be a great show. Stay with us. Today is one of those special days we all cherish in our lives. I get to not only fly fish on a small stream, which is one of my favorite activities, but I also get to do it in an incredible setting. We are fly fishing on Buffalo Creek, which is in a deep and majestic gorge. This system is part of Willow Creek Ranch, which is located a few hours away from Casper, Wyoming. Joining me today in the gorge is Richard Swanson, a native of New York State, who frequently comes to Willow Creek Ranch just so he can partake of the wonderful fly fishing that is available. Like me, he's a small stream fanatic and loves spending a day stalking and casting the trout. It's a beautiful day and the conditions are favorable for some great fly fishing. Whoa, get him. Oh, nice fly. You might go for a double. Sure. Take them down here. Now right in the undercut bank. You got tied up, got tied up a bit. That's a nice fish. Get my hands wet. Look at this. That's nice. That's a good 10 incher. Just pop the fly out like that. That's look at that. We haven't even seen the big ones today yet. Beautiful. Okay, Rich, ready to go down below? The average size of the brown trout in this system is approximately 8 inches, but there are many 12 to 16 inch specimens caught as well. Like many seemingly innocuous looking small streams, this system can yield some really big browns, some up to 22 inches in size. Most of the truly large fish are usually caught near dark. Okay, we've come to a, a small pool in an elbow here. This is a classic place to fish on a small stream. Now, it's not the best way to cast to it right now because it's downstream, but with the way the sun is and our shadows, and I think also because I'm wearing a light shirt, I should really be wearing something dark and try and camouflage myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cast and let the fly go into the pool. I've got a tarantula on right now, and I'm going to put it just at the top of where the grass is here and let it drift out. I can see some trout right now just on the sides and just fooling around, picking up things as they come into the stream. Now... Hopefully, we can get it in the first cast so I don't spook them. The best thing is usually to make your cast, your false cast, over to the left or to the right, but not over the pool. You got to kind of try and avoid giving any type of shadow or flash. So I'm going to do it over to the side here. So get the length right. Okay. Didn't see it. So I'm going to get it up for a spook him. Make another cast. Oh, he's got it. Okay. All right. Oh, oh. The other one pulled him right over the grass. Now he's gone right into it. 
Now, now the unfortunate part is you're going to spook the pool when you do one of these. There's so many trout in here. I, I can see at least eight or ten brown trout. And this guy's got himself right into the weeds. Okay. Let's see if we can get this guy. He's dug himself right into the weed. I don't know how deep it is here, but we're gonna find out. This is what'll happen a lot of times. These small creeks with a lot of weed, I can feel his head shaking, so I know he's still on. You gotta go real gentle. You can tip it. So there, you, there you go. There he is. No. Nope. I had him. He just got off. He's in those weeds somewhere. Yeah. That'll happen a lot. You're gonna lose a lot of fish in small stream fishing. That's part of the thrill because it's just not easy to do. The casts are difficult. The presentations are difficult. But when you do well and you do put it all together and you don't spook the fish, we're not even talking about big fish, it's just so much fun. And then, of course, the beauty of where we are, I mean, this is phenomenal. Ready to go downstream some more, Rich? Okay. Big fish. That's a big one. That sounded big. Oh, well done. Yeah, he's, he's, oh, that's a nice one. Actually, uh, I, I had him on for about uh, a minute and a half, two minutes, and then he went right into the undercut, undercut stone ledge and uh, somehow got off. He was one of the largest trout that, uh, that we've seen in the last hour or two, I would estimate 22 inches. Very big trout. Uh, you could tell by the take that that was a big fish. Oh, it was an aggressive take. It uh, had a real... Now, I noticed he went right underneath there, and this is where you'd expect him to be, either underneath here, under this undercut sure. on the inside of the, the beginning of the pool, yeah. or where those rocks are, because it's dug underneath there from the current during the high water. And he came right out from underneath that bush. That was great. And you could tell just by the take it was that big, sloppy whack. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go downstream and see if we can get some more. The term terrestrials refers to any food source for trout that normally lives on the land, but which has now fallen into their window of opportunity. Small stream ecosystems usually provide trout with an abundance of terrestrials such as moths, ants, and grasshoppers. It is grasshoppers which are a particular favorite of small stream trout here in the West. Hoppers are quite abundant and a substantive meal for opportunistic trout. The frequent high winds and the sheer number of grasshoppers ensures that trout get to eat lots of these insects. As this slow motion sequence aptly demonstrates, any hapless grasshopper who falls or gets blown into the water will normally be quickly attacked by the ravenous trout. There's a lot of competition for food in these systems, and as such, they usually strike anything that looks like a meal. The two favorite patterns Rich and I like to use are the Madame X and the Tarantula. Both patterns are well known as great surface flies. You can learn more about these patterns and other hopper imitations at our website at www.thenewflyfisher.com. When small stream fly fishing, it is imperative to keep a low profile and carefully work your way into position. Often the combination of sunlight, tall grass, and even wind can help mask your movements. There's a lot of competition. Yeah, you go ahead and do that. And what I'm going to do before the whole pool spook spooks, yeah, I'm going to put one over there. Because I can see a real good. Yeah. There's two spots up here. There's, uh, the undercut corner here, which is a real popular ambush point, 
and also there's a big boulder over on the left. As you can see, the wind's just come up. And as everybody tells me, the wind here can be pretty incredible. And I'm using a four-way. You got a three-way, don't you, Rich? Oh, you missed it. I got him. Okay, nice. That's a nice one. Yeah, here, I'll go get it for you. Where's your, lift your uh, leader. There, there, he's covered in weed. Okay, just throw him out there. Okay, oh, mine's off. Okay. Well. And I'll get this guy off for you. Let me just get my hand wet before I touch him. Weed out of his mouth. He has enough problems I have weed in his mouth. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. It's a nice six inch one. And there's much bigger ones than as you can see by the undercut. I mean, I'm quite confident there's an 18 or 20 inch. There's so many trout in this pool beyond words, but we're looking for the big ones. And we're actually using fairly large. Oh, there you go. There's another one. Now, you know what I had happen to me once, Rich, is uh, I caught one of these small trout. It was a small brook trout. And this was on a, a meadow creek. And I was fighting them like this, and a big one came out and nailed them, big brown, about a 20-incher. Took them right off my, uh, took them right off. Did you get the big one? No, he got off. He's got the trout, too. Happened so fast. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Just a little guy. This is a, a sign of a real healthy system. And they're very opportunistic in here, which is why, you know, usually they're a lot spookier, but we've been doing really well today. I think we've got a few things in our favor, like the wind. Just let him go off there. There we go. Like all fish, a small stream trout requires certain elements to ensure a long life. Their primary needs are ready access to food, minimum energy exerted to hold in one position, and of course security from predators. Based on these needs, there are certain types of structure you need to focus on when fly fishing on small streams. Large weed growths at the head and edges of small pools will usually hold trout because they provide quick access to cover. Back eddies and spring washouts can create some of the best cover for trout. Undercut banks are ideal for trout because they provide great security from overhead predators such as raptors, plus they give a trout easy access to food lanes. Normally the largest fish in any pool or system will occupy these prime lies. Bend pools are wonderful locations for trout because they provide depth for security, good current flow for oxygen, and usually a steady flow of food. They also often offer good undercut banks because the spring runoffs will dig away at the bank and provide excellent cover. Obvious structures such as logs, tree branches, or bushes are also a great bet to find trout. Another good spot is shadows created by the direction of the sun at certain times of the day. These are often overlooked by anglers, and this is a shame as they often produce some of the biggest fish in any system. Oftentimes, you can spot trout in the locations you expect them, but you have to be very inventive and versatile in presentation methodology. Okay, I'll just try and get it in. Oh, I keep getting blown over a bit. Okay, so I got it. Oh, he broke me off. He broke me off. Son of a gun. Son of a gun. Was that him that took it? Yes, it was him. That was the big boy. 
And I, I barely lifted up, and he turned and ran so hard because he felt that hook. He broke it. Oh, look at that. Well, let's, uh, let's let you get in there, and I'll retie. Gene Bay, who is the owner and operator of Willow Creek Ranch, talked to me a bit about what this area has to offer and why so many people come from around the world to experience both the fishing and Western lifestyle. The Willow Creek Ranch at the hole in the wall is definitely not a dude ranch. We have no pools, no spas, no hot tubs. Uh, we offered uh, no, uh, no such amenities. We're a real working ranch, and most people, honestly, have never been to a real working ranch. We also have an abundance of uh, outlaw history here. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid uh, lived in and around the Hole in the Wall, and of course, as you know, their gang was named the Hole in the Wall Gang. Uh, from here, they rode in many directions to mostly rob trains and and banks. Uh, they were they were not uh, in any way uh, molesting the local people here, or uh, people in general. It was mostly trains and banks that they molested. Uh, we have a sizable amount of uh, the remnants of their cabins, uh, their corral systems, uh, their, the places they lived and hung out. Coming to the Willow Creek Ranch uh, would enable you to enjoy the, all the ranch activities, branding, roping, riding, gathering, roundups. Uh, you'd have uh, an excellent uh, kitchen, good food, really good food. We do a lot of fishing. In the fall, we do some hunting. Could have. If you spot a trout feeding, or you want to cast to a sweet looking spot, then you need to take a logical approach to getting into casting position. Here are some important considerations to take when tactically approaching a small stream. First off, try to approach from downstream. Fish normally face upstream, which means this lessens a chance they'll visually detect you if you cast from behind. Additionally, downstream presentations often result in poor hook sets and lost fish. Upstream is definitely the best, if at all possible. Next. Try to keep low and move slowly. The higher you are, the more likely you will be spotted. Crouch or even go down on your knees to move into casting position. Ensure you move slowly and deliberately. Heavy footsteps send vibrations through the ground, which are picked up by the trout's lateral lines. This will immediately alert them to your presence. Try to use available cover. If there's tall grass, shrubs, or trees, use them to hide your silhouette. Going hand in hand with this is the need to dress such that you blend in with the landscape. Do not wear bright shirts or anything will make you stand out. You have to dress like a hunter and often olive drab colors and any other earth tones will help you hide from being spotted. You want to blend in with the local topography. Also, try to use existing shadows cast by the sun if they're available. Trout will use shadows to hide and so should we. Of course, you should never throw a shadow across a small stream. It immediately alerts the fish of your presence. So beware of where the sun is and where your shadow is cast. This is particularly important in the early morning and late day when your shadows are at their longest length. This also pertains to your fly rod. Do not make false casts in such a way that the shadow from the rod crosses over the stream. Waiting. There's quite a bit of debate about this, and I'm of the opinion that if you can avoid it, then do so. Even if you make the slowest movements in the water, your body is still vibrating sound throughout the pool or whatever part of the stream you're in. Trout are very sensitive to changes, including vibration. So if you don't have to do it, then don't. Of course, there are times when the casting situation dictates that you must get in the water. Just move slowly and deliberately and try to mask your presence by using shallow water locations such as where there's faster water or riffles. If you spook a pool, and who hasn't done that a few times, 
then the best thing to do is either sit down and have a nap or go away for an hour or so. The key is to totally rest the pool. Don't sit on the bank with your friend and spend the next 30 minutes having a loud discussion about hatches and stock prices. That won't help. Truly give the trout time to forget your transgression. After some time passes, then there's an excellent chance you can come back after an hour or so and make that one great cast and presentation that will lure that trophy 16-inch brown from the concealment of an undercut bank. For leaders, the rule of thumb I like to use is that my leader and tippet should be the same length as my rod. Thus, if I'm using a seven and a half foot fly rod, then my leader tippet combination should be roughly the same. The longer the leader, the more difficult it is to control with a short rod and also keep it out of bushes and branches. Now that being said, there are times and conditions where I will greatly lengthen the tippet to present a dry fly to trout that are particularly spooky. Just be prepared to snag up a lot on trees and branches and shrubs. In terms of tippet size, I try to always use the strongest I feel I can get away with. For most of my small stream fly fishing, that is usually 4x or 5x, especially with good sized flies such as hopper patterns. There are times when 6x or 7x is required for delicate dry fly presentations, but normally small stream trout are very aggressive and they will strike as soon as the fly lands in the water. Therefore, you don't need to use light tippets. I'm a bit of a minimalist in my approach to small stream fly fishing. I rarely use a vest as I find they get quickly hot and bothersome. Today's modern chest packs, small stream bags, and other accessories are incredibly handy and will conveniently hold everything you need for a day in the water. The chest bag I'm using today, which is a William Joseph design, even features a hydration system fitted into the backpack. This is incredibly handy for quenching your thirst after a long day of walking. The key is that there's a lot of great choices in small stream bags that will help you carry everything you need with comfort and convenience. Well, first cast I got, a very first cast. I really enjoyed my day in the gorge with Rich. It is a truly wonderful experience to share such a magical time with someone who appreciates it as much as I do. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads.